I see love here uh, in this wide world. Today we're visiting a friend and um, I hope you guys enjoy this video. Can you introduce yourself and um, tell us um, how you got started? A little brief um, introduction of yourself. My name's Tu King. Uh, my loft is Chi Loft. I got into pigeon when I was, uh, gosh, maybe second, third grade. Okay. And from there on, it you know it just kind of started and stopped and started again. How have you done um, these past couple of years that you've been racing? You mean in club or one off? And all the levels. You know, I, I say, I like to say I'm humble. So <laughs> I think that, you know, I got my fair share of wins from uh, club races and that's where I do best. Uh, you know, I haven't taken any uh, on the first drop in one-off races, but you know, I've gotten you know a few here and there in the money So, you know, I'm happy with that Yeah, so uh, the past three years you've been doing pretty good in the Purple Heart and um, Last year you won first place. How did you feel about that? You know, it was it was exciting that I've taken uh, first second and third uh, but I think when you put in the work in your birds you know the results speak for itself what's uh, one of the memories that you have in club racing that um, you're happy about or you remember the most I think I, I have to say maybe back in 2021 when I taken uh, second place overall in the purple heart race and the win you know wasn't in my favor and I've taken uh, second place, you know, it was pretty exciting to see, you know, that the win is not in your, you know, favor, but you still end up taking second place. Yeah, that's very hard to do. Right, you know. All right, um, can we see some of your your breeders? Sure. So no, what do you want to see? Let's start with this section. Can you explain what this section is for? So this is one of my uh, individual. Um, this pair right here is my money winner from uh, Florida Derby this year. Uh, the blue bar right there placed 54th place on the final uh, 355 mile race. And then the hand uh, behind him is the one of the hand that I had bred specifically, you know, for him. I see. So what about on this side? On this side here we have a cock bird that I got from um, uh, Ling Chen. Uh, he flown in the Blue Bucket One Off race last year uh, and he was 10th uh, on the final drop, 350 mile. And the hand there is a uh, direct daughter from Who's Your Daddy made it to Wake a Girl from uh, Greek Connection. Nice. Can you explain what this section is for? This section is some of my uh, extra cocks that I just kind of put over here if I need to swap when I want to, you know, swap the cock, you know, in uh, some with some of the hen. I see. Is there any uh, cock in here that you like, or anything, anyone that you like, how it feels? You know, I um, I can show you a few of them. All right. This is a cock bird from my buddy Steve. He sent me this cock uh, to put it back with the hand that bred the um, 
the father and the mother to my first and second place uh, in the Purple Heart last year. Uh, this guy right here is from Proto J Loft. Uh, he is a full brother to Young Picasso from Greek Connection. the wing nice what do you think about that bird I think this bird has all the quality um, he's medium to big very tight vent and from the keel bone to the vent, you know, it's only about uh, a finger length. So it's some, you know, it's one of those birds that I look for in terms of a breeder itself. I see. So what do you look for in a breeder when you're selecting or when you handle a bird? You know, it's, it's tough to say because sometimes I think as long as it's producing results, then that's all that matters to me. But if it was a bird that I was bringing, you know, into my loft for the first time that hasn't produced any uh, results, uh, let's say for instance, a young bird, I prefer one that, you know, is background is full of performance, you know, kind of like from Greek Connections. I'll get a bird from him that, you know, siblings has bred winners or, um, you know, the, the kids of those birds, you know, have done walls. So I know that I've got something that actually, you know, has a performance background. I see. Anything else you want to look at? Yes. Over this here. This is my uh, breeding section. How I got 12 uh, okay. boxes in here. 12 boxes? Yep. And how many pairs in here right now? 12 pairs right now. Okay. Can we take a look? Is there any um, any pair that you're looking forward to in this section? You know, I raised everything from this section, so one pair that I look forward to the most is probably my um, triple six, made it to uh, seven seventeen. I'll show you what it is. This is 717. She was 57th place in the Hoosier last year, uh, final. Her, um, her full brother was 29th overall in the final in Pattaya, one off race for Mike Gannis. So I think I got something good going here, but this is one pair that I'm looking forward to the most. That's a very nice bird. I want to be handled. Yeah. Thank you for showing us. And I'll show you the cock.
and and what's that bird off of? This is a direct sun from Young Castle, made it to Super Crack 135 from Creek Connection. Very nice. My friend here has some top birds. Do you um do you sell any birds? I try to make birds available, uh, you know, after the season and, um, but, you know, it's one of those things. I have limited their people who kind of, you know, buy and call me in advance or message me, but, you know, I, I try to find what I do have, you know, available for anybody who's interested in my birds. If someone who is interested in your birds, um, how can they reach you? They can just message me on Facebook. I'm on Facebook at Timothy Gates. Do you have a phone number in case they would like to reach you through? Yeah, my phone, phone number is uh, 651-442-3993. All right, thank you. If you guys are interested, reach out to him. He has some top birds. He's done well with them too. This section right here, it's kind of the quarantine section right now for all the birds that are being sent in for the Purple Heart Range this year. Last night, I brought some birds for him already. So they're in this group. How long do you keep them in here for? I keep them in here for three to five days and I'll take a look at them if they're doing good, then I'll uh, move them over to the younger section. Do you give them anything in their water? Uh, in the water, it's just uh, pretty much just water itself and all in one. I see. Uh, other than that, they come, what I do is I vaccinate them for PMV and that's about it. Thank you. And this section right here is for uh, the young birds. How many birds are you handling this year for the Purple Heart? This year, uh, all the birds that are being sent in uh, right now is gonna be just right at about 72 or 73. Um, what kind of system do you run? Do you run any system? No, I, I like to think that I run natural. I, you know, I've tried darkening, I've tried light, and now I just do natural. How do you like uh, the natural system? You know, I, it has its up and down, but I, I've done well last year with it, so I'll stick with it this year. All right, uh, do you see any uh, difference in the moat when they're in the natural system? You know, I don't pay too much attention to when they're molting. I think the most important thing is that when it comes to the races, you know, they're done molting or especially the money race. That's when it matters the most that they're, you know, they're all done molting. Do you, uh, do you cut the last flights, the last two flights or anything with it? For natural, I don't even cut or pull flights. I see. So um, when they trap in, how do they trap in? Well, I normally set my trap door over here, and when they come, they will come through the trap door from here, and then it, I have a drop trap, and then they'll just come through here and drop in. Um, what, what type of feed do you feed your birds? I buy my feed from JRK uh, feeds. They use, uh, it used to be uh, TLC, um, and I use the one that kind of looked like uh, P22 from Des Moines. Do you put anything in the feed when, um, like every week or every month? Do you put anything in it? Right now, it's just you know straight 
those feeds I don't put anything in the feed um, once I start you know letting the birds out uh, to route uh, I'll mix uh, what is it um rest cell uh, once a week and then up until uh, before I start training road training I stop and that's all I use uh, do you put anything in the water any medication yeah you know I'll use all in one uh, once a week uh, I mean the birds uh, and that's pretty much it do you give them any vitamins in the water uh, vitamins you know I don't I don't stick with vitamins you know <laughs> my birds done well so there's really no point of you know giving vitamins okay so do you use any electrolytes too no I don't use electrolytes uh, I'm not a big believer in electrolytes uh, I think if I train the birds you know correctly and you know they do well I don't you know even give electrolytes okay, okay. so how big is this uh, young bird section this young bird section is um, if I remember correctly is 9 by 15 or 9 by 16 how, um, how often do you clean and um, is it easy to clean with these type of grates? So under the grates, I will scrape once every six months. I see. Do you think that a uh, bigger feeder is better for when you have a lot of birds so they aren't fighting for it or you like them to fight for the feed? You know, I... You know, with the amount of uh, the section and the birds, I think having uh, big long feeders, you know, it helps out a lot. Do you always uh, provide grit? Yes, I always have grits. What kind of grit do you feed the I birds? I use Versalaga. Um, do you feed the same thing to your breeders as well? Same feed, same grit? Yep, I use any, all the same thing for my young birds and my breeders, they get the same thing. now. In terms of the young birds, when I do start, uh, you know, road training into racing season, I switch to low pro. How do you like that low pro feed? You know, I think they did well last year, so, you know, maybe I'm doing something right, those feed are good, so I'll stick with that. I know this bird has has done uh, pretty good for you these past couple years. Yeah, this bird was a bird that Johnny Lynn raised uh, in the California Classic. It was first place in the 100 or 110 mile toss, and then it was fifth place in the 350 mile um, second win race. Uh, I bought it that year that you know it finished the race from Johnny and. Since then, it has bred, you know, really good babies for me. This is a very nice bird. I've handled it before and it's super nice. Spartan King is off of this bird right here. How many uh, extra hens and cock do you have, and how often do you swap the mating? Well, prior years, I uh, you know I do anywhere between thirty to thirty-five breeders, uh, but this year I had planned that I wasn't going to raise club anymore, uh, anymore, so I had uh, you know reduced my stock uh, down to about fourteen pairs. 
Now I have about maybe, you know, 10 extra cards in hand then I kind of swap, you know, after a few rounds uh, around just to see how it does. What's your uh, plan for this year for your breeders? Test as much as possible, I guess. Um, are there any specific places that you're sending to? This year I've uh, sent birds to Cricket River, uh, Hoosier, uh, sending to Florida Derby again, and then uh, I've sent birds down to Martinez. I think that's about it. Okay. us how you uh, built this loft and uh, why did you build it the way it is? Well this, this loft here was designed on uh, Ohikri website and I designed it uh, to be this way because you know I've had multiple lofts in the past and I think that you know having something this size because my wife was telling me <laughs> you either go big or you're gonna you're not gonna get a second one so this was why I uh, I had designed this one this way. Uh, it works for me. Uh, I plan on doing some changes, you know, out on the aviary uh, this year before I start uh, letting the birds out. Uh, but this is a 12 by 40. Okay, can we take a look around the loft? Yep. So I see that you don't have um, any vents on the bottom. Nope, I do not have vent on the bottom. How do you uh, how do you think about the windows being like this? Does it help with the airflow and the air inside? Yeah, you know, I uh, inside of it, I had uh, put these wind uh, turbine or whirly bird on top of it so that it gets that airflow to push out, you know, any of the dust from the inside. Um, and I opened the windows, you know, over by the younger section, so it seemed like it's working fine for me. Okay. So when will you uh, start training the young birds? The young birds will be let out um, maybe towards the end of this month. That's when I'll let them out. Can you tell us uh, the process of your young bird uh, training or system? <laughs> I just let the birds out like, and uh, once they're out, it's up to them. Like when do you uh, start road training them? When do you decide that? Um, well, I start road training the third week of July. Um, I let the birds route for a good, I say at least two months, you know, two and a half months uh, from, let's say, you know, this year, the end of uh, this month up until, you know, the third week of July, then that's when I start road training. Um, how far do you road train them and how often per week? I train them about twice uh, per week. Uh, I start them down the block. I'll go a mile, three miles, five miles, and then I'll jump from five miles to 10 miles, 15 miles, 20 miles. Then I get as far as 64 miles. And then once I get to my 64 mile mark, I will put on my uh, club member's trailer and he'll go out twice a week. Uh, to 64 mile twice a week and up until the first race and we train them same spot uh, 64 mile twice uh, a week up until the race uh, ends okay do you think that training them a lot on the road is important or do you think that they can just slot fly and minimize the road training and they'll still do good I think training birds, uh, you know, matters a lot. If you just love flying, that doesn't mean anything at all. They're only flying around the surrounding law area, so that doesn't, you know, help much. They're getting the exercise, you know, around the law, but when they're, you know, you take them on down the road, they gotta think. And when they think, you know, they work their brain and it works differently from you know flying around the loft. So, 100%, I believe that you gotta do road training in order for the birds to be in shape and to do well on races. Okay. 
So when the birds they come in, uh, where do you usually see them come in from? So when the birds come, they come normally from the south, which is th in this way. And they'll come and fly over, circle around, and then come and land on the top of the aviary. Okay. Do the uh, young birds have access to the aviary every day or yes. only when you let them out? Uh, they have access to the aviary uh, from inside the loft uh, every day. And that's pretty much. What's your, uh, what's your process of homing them and making sure that they know uh, that this is their home? I let them out in the aviary every day. That's pretty much the process. <laughs> Do you uh, trap train them on top or anything? Like, do I what? Do you, do you trap train them on top or like, like in a cage or anything like that? No, nope, I don't trap train my birds. You just... Um, I let them out, they okay. figure it out and you know, they're smart birds. So my, you know, the drop trap is designed in a really easy way where the birds look through it and then they just drop down. So I don't, you know, train my birds uh, how to trap at all. Yeah. I really like the drop trap as well, uh, instead of the um, barb uh, traps, because I think they also um, trap easier too, and they're less scared of it. So, um, how big is the loft? The whole loft? The lo whole loft is 12 by 40. 12 by 40? And how much was it? Uh, this loft itself uh, cost me about, just the loft uh, without the inside, cost me about 10300 And after all the, you know, numbers and whatnot on the inside, uh, we're talking about, you know, slightly over 18000 This is a very nice loft. You see good? Yeah. This is the grit. Smells good. I eat it too. <laughs> <laughs> so these are the feed that I uh, give my birds. Not anything in it, you know, nothing special. Okay. You talk about um, when you ship birds out. So these are the boxes that you know I get from uh, you know breeders sending birds in, and what I do is I just kind of keep it once you know the season's over and breeder wants the bird back, I'll use whatever I have to ship out you know their birds back to them. Uh, any boxes that are old or like a used one that have been used for you know multiple times. I will just throw those away and then I'll use new boxes. But they gotta pay. I charge them for those boxes. All right, what's a, what's a tip that you can give to someone who um, is starting new in a club level? I think, you know, like everybody's saying, look for the local guys, you know, in your area where you can buy birds from them. You know, those are the birds that are gonna, you know, be the best one to club race with. Yes, I agree with that. My best bird is um, from local people as well. Okay. Um, what's a what's a tip for someone who would like to get started in uh, one off racing? I you know same thing you know I say buy birds that have done well for other guys in one off races and you know fly off of those you know birds that you buy from them. What is um, some things that you can share to um, people who are new in the sport? who would like to get started? You know, I, I'd say keep things simple. You know, buy birds from, if you want a club race, buy birds from your local guys in the areas. You want a loft race, you know, look for guys who do well in one loft race and buy birds from, you know, them. If it's too expensive, buy from the guys who buy from them and then you buy from them. What's one thing that um, you can tell my viewers um, how to keep things simple and still get um, good results? 
I think you just said the answer yourself. You know, you said, you know, keep things simple. So that's what it comes down to. You know, keep things simple. Uh, don't make things complicated. Uh, don't use things that you shouldn't use. Keep things really simple. All right, guys. Thank you for watching this video today. I hope you guys enjoy it. Um, I'm glad that you guys got to meet one of my friend in this sport. He has some very top quality birds. If you guys are interested, I'll put his um, I'll put his Facebook underneath in the link, and I'll also put his phone number. Um, yeah, I hope you guys learned something from this video. I hope that uh, you guys like this video. Comment below what you like about this video, and um, um, I'll be doing more of these um, type of videos. I'll be doing interviews and loft tours and hopefully um, I can do more of these type of videos for you guys. I am planning to um, visit some more loft race too so hopefully um, I can try to make a good video for you guys and uh, thank you for watching.